Hello everyone. Many of you have requested for a full course in DFT. So here we are to make you really smart in density functional theory. Let's start our first lecture. The aim of this lecture series are to make you so efficient that you can plan your research in a smarter way. Then, after finishing this lecture series, you will be able to interact knowledgeably with your collaborators. And yes, we know how painful it is to read a manual without knowing the terminologies. So, after finishing this lecture series, you will be able to read your manual comfortably. Whatever DFT package you may are using, you have to know the terminologies. Now, in this lecture series, we will try to stick to concepts and some very few easy mathematics. For the best outcome, sit calm and concentrated. Also, don't lose the flow and complete this video uninterrupted. Before starting the course, we should know the inventor of DFT. Now, the full framework making of DFT has taken many brilliant minds over a long span of century, but it was actually Walter Cohn who was awarded 1998 Nobel Prize in Chemistry for his development of the density functional theory, as said by Nobel Committee. Now, we will start by taking a collection of atoms because whatever you do in DFT is nothing but a collection of atoms. At the simplest, let's say a molecule with m number of nucleus and n number of electrons. It's reasonable to take a look at the Schrodinger equation at first to see how messy the situation is. This is your Schrodinger equation. From the very basics of quantum mechanics you know, this is your kinetic energy term. This part is the interaction energy between each electron and the collection of atomic nuclei, which means the attraction part. And this is the interaction energy between different electrons, which means the repulsive part. Now adding these three, you get the total energy. Let's say this is our equation number one. Now, there are some key points to remember. See, from the Schrodinger equation, what we need to know is precisely the energy and more importantly, how the energy changes if we move the atoms around. See, nucleus are much, much heavier than electrons. That's why electrons respond much more rap rapidly to the changes in their surroundings than the nuclei can. Now she, positions of nuclei are fixed. So, if we have m nuclei at positions r1 dot 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 r m, then we can express the ground state energy E as a function of the positions of this nuclei, as E of r1 dot 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 r m. This quantity is called the adiabatic potential energy surface, which is actually the ground state energy. By knowing that adiabatic potential energy surface, we can tackle the original problem here. Now it's time for an easy calculation. At the simplest, let's take two electrons only. These two electrons have the Hamiltonians like H1 psi 1 equal to E1 psi 1 and H2 psi 2 equal to E2 psi 2 where psi1 is the wave function of first electron and psi2 is the wave function of another electron. Now let's take a wave function psi equal to psi1 into psi2. So psi is the product of these two wave functions. Now let's see what is h psi. h psi equal to h1 plus h2 into psi1 psi2 which gives h1 psi1 psi2 plus h2 psi 1 psi 2 just the multiplication now psi 1 is the eigenfunction of h1 and psi 2 is the eigenfunction of h2 so we can take the psi 1 as an eigenfunction of this h1 and we we will put this psi 2 as a constant in the back of h1 similarly we will we will put the psi 1 here so in the next line we get psi 2 h1 psi 1 plus psi 1 h2 psi 2 equal to psi 2 
e1 psi 1 plus psi 1 e2 psi 2 because we have seen that h1 psi 1 equal to e1 psi 1 that is what we are putting here h1 psi 1 equal to e1 psi 1 and h2 psi 2 equal to e2 psi 2 equals to e1 psi 1 psi 2 plus e2 psi 2 psi 1 simple we can write equal to e1 plus e2 into psi 1 psi 2 now see that h1 had given the eigenvalue e1 h2 had given the eigenvalue e2 so and h1 plus h2 is giving the eigenvalue e1 plus e2 that means if psi 1 and psi 2 are the eigenfunctions of h1 and h2 then their products are also the eigenfunction of h1 plus h2 so this product is called the hat tree product which will be useful to us up to now we are only talking about molecules and simple systems let's take the co2 molecule in co2 molecule you have you have 8 plus 6 plus 8 into 3 equal to 66 dimensions so just a co2 molecule not a bulk system not a very big system then you have to delete 66 dimensions if you take a platinum nanocluster of 100 atoms you will have to deal with nearly 23,000 dimensions not a joke I mean really so the problem increases when you have to deal with this interaction term already you have 23,000 dimension now you have their interaction so the situation gets really messy now fortunately we have some points at rescue we have seen that knowing the adiabatic potential energy surface which means the ground state energy if you know the ground state energy you can tackle the original problem now the ground state energy is time independent that's why for ground state energy the Schrodinger equation is time independent thank God because solving time independent Schrodinger equation is a lot easier than the time dependent one now it is possible to approximate psi as a product of individual electron wave functions like psi equal to psi 1 into psi 2 dot 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 psi n which is the Hartree product so you don't have to deal with summations always another thing is electrons are identical particles maybe you are thinking like so what if electrons are identical particles how that is going to actually help me so this so what is answered like that say you have two electrons and in your mind you have thought that this is my one electron okay now take a blink after blinking you will not be able to recognize your one electron maybe the identical one is confusing you that I am the one electron so that is the problem with identical electrons and one thing to remember is that the Schrodinger equation can be solved but the wave function does not give you any physical property the physical property is the position which is psi star psi now the probability that the n electrons are at a particular set of coordinates r1 to rn is equal to psi star into psi where the psi star is just the complex con conjugate of psi in every quantum mechanical problem you have already dealt with at first you calculate psi then you have to calculate psi star into psi now since you cannot label electrons as 1 2 3 4 you don't really bother about which electron is at r1 which which one is at r2 or dot 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 because if the second electron is at r1 and the first electron is at r2 i should not say like that but for your understanding for the sake of your understanding let, let's say the second electron is at r1 and the first electron is at r2 so what you will not be able to recognize the first and second so that's not a problem that's why the quantity of physical interest is the probability that a set of n electrons in any order have coordinates r1 to rn which means the density of electrons is the matter of physical interest now 
density of electrons at a particular position in space is given by n equal to 2 into summation over psi i star into psi i where this 2 comes because of spin because of electron spin now the whole theory of density functional theory rests upon two fundamental mathematical theorems pretty isn't it you just have to know only two uh, for the basis of dft but before that you have to answer me what is a functional the very popular saying is that function of a function is functional very popular and very mythical but it's actually wrong a functional in a functional there exists a one-to-one -one mapping between two fields for example you can take this definite integral for one definite integral you have only one value of this capital f so now in a functional you have a one-to-one -one mapping like let's say you have two fields function field and functional field in function field you have three points if there exists a functional then there is exactly one to one mapping between two fields now if you know the function you already know the functional because there is only one to one correspondence so if you have a hard functional and a relatively easy function it's quite normal to calculate the function only because calculating calculating the function will give you the functional anyway the first theorem is the ground state energy from Schrodinger equation is a unique functional of the electron density. We will do the simple proof. We have three things to consider, the potential, the wave function and the electron density. Map C relates potential energy with the wave function. Map D relates the wave function with the electron density. What we are going to prove is the inverse mapping, map D inverse and map C inverse. To start, let's say we have two potentials, V and V prime, which differs by more than a constant. For V, you have the Hamiltonian equation like H psi equal to T plus U plus V into psi equal to E psi. For V prime, you also have the Hamiltonian H prime psi prime equal to T plus U plus V prime into psi prime equal to E prime psi prime C. Just because V and V prime are different, psi and psi prime have to be different if there exists a one-to-one -one mapping. Now let's say it is not so. And psi equal to psi prime. Now if psi equal to psi prime, equation 3 minus equation 4 gives V minus V prime into psi equal to E minus E prime into psi which gives V minus V prime equal to E minus E prime. Now see that V and V prime are operators and E and E prime are eigenvalues. So E minus E prime must be a constant, but we already have taken that V and V prime differs by more than a constant. So this equation simply cannot hold. And we have psi not equal to psi prime, which is our equation number five. Thus, for every ground state wave function psi, there corresponds a potential energy V, and map C inverse is established. For map D inverse, let's say from the variational principle, you can say E equal to psi h psi within bracket less than psi prime h psi prime. This, uh, this inequality is justified by saying that these energy states are non-degenerate. Now, psi prime h psi prime equal to psi prime t plus u plus v psi prime within bracket. In next line, we will do a little trick. See, psi prime t plus u plus v prime plus v minus v prime psi prime within bracket. We have added v prime and we have subtracted v prime. Now, T plus U plus V prime is actually H prime. So in next line, it becomes psi prime H psi prime plus psi prime V minus V prime psi prime. Now, 
that psi prime h prime psi prime is actually the e prime so equal to e prime plus integration over n prime into v minus v prime where this n prime is the electron density and v and v prime are the potential representative of these two trial wave functions now if you put this result back to equation 6 you get e less than e prime plus integration over n prime v minus v prime so in equation 6 what we have done we have started with e if we had started with e prime we could have got e prime equal to psi prime h prime psi prime which is less than psi h prime psi again this inequality is also justified by the non-degenerate state so by the similar process we get e prime less than e plus integration over n into v prime minus v so see i am saying here similarly you you also don't have to do the calculation because when what we are doing is we are exchanging the primes see here you don't have a prime and here you have a prime in every part of this equation wherever you don't have prime in this equation you have prime there just this is the difference now if the wave function is not a functional of electron density then the two electron density n and n prime can be taken as similar so if n equal to n prime equation 7 plus equation 9 gives the contradiction e plus e prime less than e prime plus e which simply is not possible that's why we can say n equal to n prime sorry n not equal to n prime and this proves that there exists one and only one electron density for each web function and map d inverse is established now we had this situation at first we have proved this map c1 we also have proved map d inverse and c inverse so c inverse and d inverse has been proved that's why you can say that map c and map d has also been proved and hence the theorem that the ground state energy from schrodinger equation is a unique function of electron density has been proved too now the problem is okay the ground state energy is unique functional of electron density but which electron density should you take there are so many electron densities so this problem is solved by the second theorem the second theorem says the electron density that minimizes the energy of the overall functional is the true electron density corresponding to the full solution of the schrodinger equation the proof is very simple here we say e equal to psi h psi where i am giving this third bracket for functional e is a functional of electron density psi is a functional of electron density also okay then we can take a trial wave function psi, psi double bar let's say for a trial ground state density n double bar you can have e double bar equal to psi double bar h double bar psi double bar from the variational principle it's clear that e double bar greater than e for n not equal to n double bar and e double bar equal to e for n equal to n double bar which clearly says this theorem that the electron density that minimizes the energy is the electron density you should use and the theorem is proved now at least now you know why it is called the density functional theory density means the electron density and functional signifies the fact that there exists a one-to-one -one mapping between energy and electron density a useful way to write down the functional is in terms of single electron wave function remember the functional is the electron density and in equation 2 we had seen that the electron density can be written down in terms of single electron wave functions so our equation becomes 
e equal to e known plus e xc. A funny way of writing the equation, right? Okay. This e known includes at first the kinetic energy, the Coulomb interactions between the electrons and the nuclei, Coulomb interactions between the pairs of electrons and the Coulomb interactions between pairs of nuclei. And this e xc is the exchange correlation functional which includes all the quantum mechanical effects that are not included in the known terms. This E X C is called X C functional or say exchange correlation functional. So this X C functional is what we are going to share in next lecture. Uh, stay tuned and please subscribe to our channel. Thank you.